All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, driving along the wall. So, uh, you know, if you have some mission kind of like this, that's really close to the starting point, um, you know, it can, you can increase your accuracy by a lot by utilizing something constant like the wall. Um, and so one of the ways that you can work with that and also minimize friction, which we learned about in the last segment, is by using wheels on the side of your robot to kind of roll along the wall. Um, and make sure you have clearance, obviously, so that when you're turning against the wall that you, know, you don't just slam it to the wall. Yeah, I think, I think that's a key point here is that you want that space because otherwise your robot will never be able to get off the wall. But using a tactic like this has been uh, sh shown to, do, to work really well uh, in FLL, especially for missions definitely right there on the wall. Uh, so the next thing here we're going to talk about is motor matching. When you have two motors on the robot like this, you want to make sure that the motors move at the same speed and go to the same distance. So if you command one rotation and the wheel moves pretty much one rotation, that's good. But then if on the next motor you command one rotation and it moves maybe three-fourths of a rotation, you can see that you're not going to be going in the same direction. Your robot is going to turn uh, to one side. And that's, that's obviously not going to allow you to traverse the uh, entire field and get to the destinations you want to get to. So also, to help your robot become more reliable and more robust, you can use sensors. And the key with sensors is that this is also what people use in the real world. People out there working on like autonomous cars and all sorts of other cool things are using sensors to be reliable. So uh, we're going to talk here about the different sensors, starting with the ultrasonic. The ultrasonic sensor gives you the distance to an object. Uh, this one can be very useful if you're trying to go, say, a certain distance from a wall, so you always stop at the same distance. Um, and then you have ones like the touch sensor. The touch sensor here pretty much works every time because all it does is it triggers if, you've, if it's touching something. So that can be really helpful for getting to a specific area or getting to a wall and then backing off so you always know you're at the wall. That way, if you had any other mishaps or any drifting down the field, you'll always know that you're at that location when the touch sensor triggers. Next, we have the gyro sensor. And with the new spike, this is also called the motion sensor. The, the gyro here gives you information about how your robot has turned as it's traveled. Um, this one can be pretty, or this one can be very useful, but it can also be pretty hard to use. There's something called drift, where the values it gives you change slightly over time, even if your robot isn't moving. And that can be really difficult to deal with. But if you can learn to sort of compensate to, to adjust, to learn how it's drifting, then you can use it to travel along any line you want down the field. So I would suggest this for more uh, advanced groups, groups looking to change and try new things. And then there's the light sensor. Light sensor obviously can be used for following lines down the field. Uh, and as we talked about in the strategy video, that's very useful for trying to get anywhere down the field. There's plenty of videos out there about using uh, the light sensor to follow lines. And also in our series, we've talked about using the Spike and Python specifically to write a line following program. Last but not least, of all the essential tools in your FLL toolkit is the jig. So the jig can be used to line up in your base before you launch your robot uh, from a single point every single time. Um, so one thing to note is that uh, you, you may have to check the rules every year. Well, you should every year. For sure. Um, but um, you may have to remove your jig before you launch your robot. Um, but it's a great way to make sure that you're always starting from the same point, which will increase your accuracy. And so the jig is just uh, some Lego device that the students build, right? So they can start anywhere if they want to, right? Exactly. It can just be a constant piece. It can be a little bit more complex, or it can just be like a little right angle. And that's better, you think, than just picking a square and trying to set up there? Absolutely. A little squares can be hard to line up against, and the angles as well might be difficult. So another great way to utilize the jig is to have some little backing or something that you can actually, you know, hard stop your Lego pieces on your robot against as well to make sure that the angle is always straight. Yeah. So that's uh, the 
tips and guidelines we have for helping your robot drive straight. So hopefully through trying to like minimize the friction and use the walls and the sensors and then starting up in the same place in the same direction every time, uh, hopefully your robot will be able to drive straight and get to all the missions you want to accomplish.